Uh, Robert, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. I'm Tim here with Marvin. How are you, sir? Just great. How are you? Good. Uh, tell us about Jihad Watch, and then we want to get into some of the issues that you guys deal with. Jihad Watch is dedicated to uh, exploring the uh, motivations and goals of the global jihad movement. And we are a website at jihadwatch.org, which gives news and commentary on jihad activity in the United States and around the world on a uh, daily basis, updated many times daily at jihadwatch.org. And uh, what, can you comment on what happened in Norway? I'm I'm kind of confused about what happened over there. Well, uh, there was a mass murder of uh, over 90 young people at a youth camp on an island in Norway. And as it turns out, the guy was a reader of Jihad Watch and of my work. And he uh, cites me in a very lengthy manifesto that he has published that's available online. And so the... Uh, New York Times and a number of other groups, another um, a num- um, other uh, media outlets, I mean, are uh, blaming me this morning for this murder. But as a matter of fact, what I've done all the way through my career is uh, defend human rights and the equality of rights of all people, the freedom of speech, the freedom of conscience, all of which are denied under Islamic law. And there's no justification in any of my work for uh, violence, for vigilantism, for anything of the kind. And so the uh, yeah. the, the connection between me and these uh, killings in Norway is like the connection between the Beatles and the Manson murders. Uh, Charles Manson thought he heard secret messages in Beatles songs that were telling him to kill, and he went and killed. But there were no such messages, and uh, to blame me would be like blaming the Beatles for the Manson murders. Robert, do you know this, the, guy, the guy who did the, the uh, killings? What what was the deal with going to the youth camp in Norway? Do you, you, you know any more about that? Well, it was a camp run by the main leading party in Norway, and this guy was a member of the rival political party in Norway, and so maybe it had something to do with that. Okay. But in any case, he uh, disguised himself as a policeman, which is how he was able to get uh, crowds around him without arousing suspicion, and then he just opened fire. Yeah. Well, Marvin, if they come back and say this guy here, here's your example of a Christian right. jihadist, so to speak. Uh, you know, the Bible clearly teaches thou shalt not murder. Right. So this guy is not a Christian because he's violating the tenets, the basic fundamental tenets of the Christian faith. Right. Now, let's flip that over to what Robert studies every day. Uh, and talks about, and that is Islamic Jihad. Uh, uh, in in the Islamic religion, uh, Robert, from what you've been able to study and see, are there prohibitions there in the same way I just mentioned the Ten Commandments in the Judeo-Christian tradition uh, where it is uh, a, a sin, if it were, you know, a sin as it were, in the Islamic faith to uh, commit uh, a murder? Well, it depends. Uh, Islamic law gives different valuation to different people's lives. So if you kill a Muslim, then uh, there is an arrangement in Islam where you can pay blood money, according to Islamic law, if the family of the victim agrees. And if you kill a Muslim, you have to pay a higher amount. You mean if, if a Muslim kill a kills a Muslim? If a Muslim kills yeah. a Muslim? Yeah, okay, I got you. And if you kill a Christian or a Jew or someone of some other faith, then you pay less, because their lives simply are not as valuable. And so Islam forbids Muslims to kill other Muslims. That's in the Quran. But it also tells Muslims to fight and wage war against unbelievers and either kill them or convert them to Islam or make them submit as inferiors to the rule of Islamic law. See, there's and nothing, so there's nothing it akin to justify it. Yeah, there's nothing akin to that in the Bible. No, okay. nothing let's, whatsoever. Let's make that clear. So there's nothing, uh, the, 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 the scriptures is thou shalt not murder. I mean, it doesn't mm-hmm. say, Marvin, thou shalt not murder other Christians, or thou shalt not murder other, Ge- mu- murder other Jews, yeah, thou shalt not murder. And in the New Testament reconfirms the treatment, right. the tre- the treatment that uh, we as believers should have for our fellow man, regardless of what who they are, what faith they are of, or anything like that. So 
I guess I want to, Robert, the reason I'm bringing this up, I know what the, a lot of the liberal media is going to do today and tonight. They're going to try to make the comparison, okay, between Islamic Jihad and what this nut job did over there in um, in Norway. They're oh, going to say, so, yeah. say it, oh, see there? It's equal. When, yeah, uh, it, well, that's when, already being done. Yeah, Very and, much and, so. And what I'm saying and what you're saying, I think I can speak for you, is no, well, let's back up just a minute. The motivation for Islamic Jihad can be found in the Quran. The motivation for murdering innocent people by this guy who claims to be, you know, a, a nationalist or even a, a, a Christian is not found in his holy book. So the comparisons stop right, right. there. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about that. Yeah. And uh, it, it seems to me, based on what I read, again, I've only read one article uh, on the incident, and that was a Washington Times article. It seems to me that he was more interested in fomenting a revolution in Europe right. than in, uh, <coughs> than, than in um, d- d- doing anything to... To, to stop the spread of, of Islam, even though he, in the name of stopping the spread of Islam, he talked a lot about the uh, enclaves and the fact that those people were being separated in these various, various communities, that uh, uh, it, was, it was time for a revolution to get us back to uh, those Western values, which is, I, in my opinion, idiocy, but that's my opinion, so... Well, the problem with this guy is that uh, he has brought discredit upon a legitimate right. line of thought, right. and that is so um, damaging. Yeah, it's so obvious that yeah, the damage true. that he's done to the resistance to the jihad movement is so extensive that it's hard not to imagine that he uh, it was actually on the other side, and that the whole manifesto is a false flag operation to draw put discredit upon his enemies. Or else he's one of the stupidest men who ever lived, because what he has done is set back the movement he professes to hold to. Yeah. He uh, was trying to kill the prime minister of his own country. But so he says, yes. Yeah, so he says that's why he uh, set the bomb off downtown by the government buildings. But anyway, uh, 76 people are dead, and um, uh, that story is still getting, inter- and will for the next few days at least, getting international attention. Let's turn our attention uh, to uh, Islamic Jihad against the West, in particular America. And you you study this on a regular basis. You know, these things, Robert, uh, are going on all around us, and just because we haven't been hit, there hasn't been an explosion. We it, it, the, the, These stories that otherwise would be, huge news for days and weeks on end and get our attention aren't getting attention because they're diffused. Yes. Um, I give, for example, the, uh, one, one example, the guy in West Texas that the, the Islamic jihadist in West Texas, the student there, he was, uh, the FBI busted him and he was planning on bombing Dallas, uh, particularly trying to get president Bush's house. He, but they said, uh, the FBI report was that he was building, a weapons of mass destruction uh the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong Robert on this uh but that's this was the guy out in Texas well they busted him they they arrested him okay but just think if he, in if he would have been able to do that okay just think if he would have yeah. been able to do that that's one example another example the uh underwear bomber uh, over uh, the city the, city the skies of Detroit remember that it, it didn't work for him. It didn't work for him. But but had it worked, then you would have had a plane fall out of the sky over Detroit, murdering people on the ground and in the, in the air. Uh, these things go on and on. Robert, you follow more than I do. You know more examples than I do. These are just, we just happened to, the, the, the guy out in Portland, Oregon, who was going to bomb the Christmas tree lighting downtown. That's right. There are many, many of these. There's actually been a sharp uptick in jihad activity in the United States over the last couple of years. And uh, don't forget the Times Square bomber on a crowded Saturday night in Times Square. uh, A Muslim car bomber was trying to kill thousands of people. And so uh, this is this is a very real threat, and we owe a great debt to law enforcement yeah. for uh, catching all these and preventing them from happening. But they're but not going right to keep. They're not going to. They're not going to continue to catch them all of them, though. Yeah, and also they make us 
complacent because yeah. uh, you're right. People don't remember failed plots. They remember carnage. And uh, the thing is, we have to recall that these people are trying to kill us in large numbers still. And uh, when they fail, it doesn't mean they're not trying. Why, why do you think – I got one more question then. Why do you think, Robert – We've talked about this before on this program, trying to understand some of our uh, government officials and so forth. Why don't you think that's ever discussed in the open by Eric Holder, the Attorney General, the President of the United States, or anybody else? Peter King tried to talk about it some in his congressional hearings. The motivation for why these people do what they do with regard to jihad, why, why is that never discussed? Like, where do these people, uh, where do these people get their ideas? You know, that's never asked. You know, go ahead. Well, that's that's the main focus of my work, actually, that uh, uh, the motivations and goals of Islamic jihadists, it's off limits to discuss in the American public square, and that this is to our great detriment because we uh, uh, lose out on the uh, ability to understand what our enemies are trying to do and how we can best protect ourselves from that. And so the difficulty is that uh, the American Muslim advocacy groups have very cannily uh, portrayed themselves as victims. And the uh, victims are never to be questioned in terms of their own agenda. And anybody who speaks out about Islamic Jihad activity and says that we need to resist it and recall it, uh, that is somebody who is targeted as a racist, as a bigot, as a hate monger, and so on. And this has been very effective in the United States in silencing all criticism of Islamic Jihad activity and in uh, making people afraid of speaking out because they're afraid of being tarred in the same way. One of the one of the recent uh, uh, interviews that uh, that that Herman Cain uh, uh, granted in that interview, he said that the people of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, had the right to to bar the building of uh, of, a, of an Islamic culture center there, based on the fact that the uh, the, the uh, that Islam is both a religion and a political uh, ideology, and uh, with the the political uh, aspect uh, comes Sharia law, and with the, with Sharia law comes subjugation of right. uh, of other people, uh, and he's been made sort of a something of a laughing stock in the media for saying that. Uh, what what are your thoughts on on his comment and? Uh, why such ridicule? Hmm. It's just really uh, uh, another manifestation of the same kind of thing. Ridicule, actually, we should recall, is a very commonly used uh, charge against the uh, 